Hi, this is Theo from ParkerBlocks.com. Today I'm going to review the Wacom Express Key Remote. First of all, I have to thank my friend Michael from MyFlyer.com who lent this to me for a few days to test it out. Now in this review, I will be talking about the basic features, what this is good for and what kind of devices you can use this with. The USB cable is for charging this remote and it uses micro USB so that cable is actually those cables that are used by Android phones for charging so you can reuse your old cables. This remote comes with 17 buttons. Each of these buttons can be assigned to a specific keyboard shortcut, menu, OS commands. So this is very customizable and the build quality is very good. This costs US $99 on Amazon.com and I think the build quality reflects that price. This feels very solid. The buttons have a firm press and an audible click when you click on them. On the back, you see this big piece of rubber and behind the rubber is some magnet. So this remote was actually designed for the Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD and it's meant to be placed onto the screen so you have the rubber that doesn't scratch the screen and also the magnet that sticks onto the Wacom Cintiq screen however you can use this with other devices as well you can use this well for the Cintiq for the Intuos Pro I have also tested this on the Intuos Non Pro I have tested this on those third-party pen digitizer display and it works perfectly well. This works on Windows and Mac OS. At the back here is the power button. You just push it to one side, you see the light turns on. This means it's on. When the light turns orange, it's time to recharge the battery. I think the battery can last about a um, few weeks before you need to recharge. I've only since charged it once and haven't seen the need to recharge it again. But if you compare this to those Bluetooth portable keyboards I'm pretty sure this is going to last much longer than those keyboards and each of these buttons if you look closely they have little indents and also raised parts like these dots here this square indent this horizontal bar that raise up and also all these separators so you can use this um, without looking at the buttons itself so that's quite good overall it's very nicely designed before you use the remote, you have to download and install the Wacom Cintiq drivers. After you install the drivers, you can plug in the USB wireless receiver. I'm using a Surface Pro 4 here, which only has one USB port. So if you use that USB port for the receiver and you want to use other USB devices, you might have to buy an extra USB hub. So now that I've plugged it in, I've installed the drivers. I'm going to turn this on. So you see the blue light, it's on and now I'm activating the menus, the shortcut buttons. So you can see that this screen overlay has been turned on and off by this button here. By the way, previously when I'm not using this remote, I have to assess the shortcuts with this app called Tablet Pro. So you can see here, all these are my shortcut buttons, but it takes up space on the screen. So now I can move all these shortcut buttons out to this uh, remote here and it saves up quite a bit of a screen space. Also if you are using this on the Surface Pro or other types of tablet, Windows tablet, I find that when I'm drawing things on the Surface Pro you can see that my hand is like this but my hand is always over the type cover and it's uncomfortable and awkward to use keyboard shortcuts like this. So usually when I draw, I will detach my keyboard here and I will use actually a Bluetooth keyboard like this. So I will usually put this to the side like this and use my keyboard shortcuts like this when I'm drawing on Surface Pro 4. But now I have a more compact and more portable solution now I'm using Mac OS. I've connected my computer to this pen digitizer display. This is the XP Pen 22HD. I have also installed the drivers for this and also the Cintiq drivers on my Mac. 
I've tried this out on Mac and also on Windows there are no driver conflicts so that's pretty good and it works on the Mac as well so I'm going to show you how you can change some of the settings and also what all these things means now when you press the setting shortcut buttons you'll be presented with this screen overlay when you move your cursor over these areas you see the box lighted up you can press any of this box and this will bring up the settings dialog box I've just clicked on one and this settings dialog box is quite similar to all the other welcome into us driver settings dialog box so here you can change all the different shortcut keys so let me change some of the keys here at this bottom area you can see that there are eight shortcut keys here and then there are the four inner keys in between these rows here i'm going to change some of this so for this menu you can see that there are a lot of options you can change this to a right click mouse clicks you can change this to a specific keystroke you can change this to a modifier and there are some on-screen controls as well so let me show you what is an on-screen control I just press one of the on-screen control this is the Wacom screen key so there are different menus that you can create so this is Wacom screen keys you can also create a specific menu just for Photoshop a specific menu for Illustrator, for InDesign or for any other software that you want to use because you might not be using Photoshop all the time and you can customize all these buttons here to reflect the keyboard shortcuts that you want so this is just one of the many menus that are available and here you see here this Photoshop colorist now this is also one of the menus and here you see that it's under this sub menu here now as you move down you have all these functions like back forward scroll zoom these are OS functions like show desktop switch applications and you go down there are some specific features specific for Cintiq like for example this touch on and off if you don't have a Cintiq then this menu doesn't do anything for you and uh, for some other menus as well like the ink toggle on screen keyboards so if you are using windows for example you are probably not going to see things like launch pad switch application so it really depends on the os you are using let me show you um, the ring keys now the ring keys are actually shortcut buttons and there's a dial in the middle there are five buttons around the ring so this is one two three four five and there is a toggle button in the center so once you press this button here you will toggle between different modes so the modes are to change your zoom you can change your brush size or you can rotate your canvas so you have to toggle this and if you press this button you can also see the indicator light it switches from one to another so if it's on this indicator light it tells me that now I can rotate the canvas and if it's on this it tells me that now I can zoom on the canvas as well this is where you can change all the functions for the buttons that surround the ring I'm going to change this bottom button here to something else I'm going to change it to a keyboard shortcut let me clear out the current one by pressing the clear button I'm going to use a spacebar for that and let me rename this as well to spacebar and press OK and now when I call up the settings overlay screen you can see here that this word here that points to the button it has been updated to reflect that name I'm going to show you why I changed that to spacebar but let me open up Photoshop and create a new file first and this is the new file I'm going to press the brush button and draw something Photoshop now I'm going to use the ring to zoom up this area so you can see that now I can zoom using the ring and if you press the toggle button you can switch between the different modes so I can switch to different brush size now I can change my brush size to something very thin 
or I can change it to something that is very thick by the way there's going to be some lag when you are changing brush sizes so um, this ring is very sensitive when it comes to changing brush sizes if you some if you need something that is accurate you might want to just type in the brush size number uh, yourself so let me show you the rotate function this is the rotate function let me zoom down for you to see whether or not you get these functions really depends on the software you are using so for Photoshop it does support rotate so you can rotate the canvas and let me toggle back to the zoom again to zoom up so just now I assigned the spacebar button to the bottom of the remote so I'm going to press the spacebar button so that I can change it into a hand you can see the hand icon now I can just move it around and release the button I can draw now I'm going to show you the radio button so you can press the button on the remote and it will bring out this circular menu the circular menu will go to where your cursor is so you can see all these different functions and you have to assess these functions by clicking it with your pen you cannot use your finger if you are using it on Surface Pro 4 because it doesn't register so you have to move your cursor over to the menu that you want and click it with the mouse cursor or with the pen stylus cursor so in this case I want to save the file I just select the save button and just save the file I think I've covered almost everything I want to say about this remote. Overall, this is a very convenient device for anyone looking for an external compact solution for keyboard shortcuts. I think you can get this. There are 17 buttons, very customizable. You can customize them to do whatever uh, you want to do. And also the overall responsiveness is very good. So you can just press the button and instantly you see the response on the screen. For example, this screen overlay. And this is my website. You can press the button to just scroll through up and down or you can use the ring here to scroll through up and down as well. By the way, I will post a link to my review in the video description just right below this video so in case there are any updates I can post it onto my web page instead of updating the video so um, that's all for my review today if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comment section below if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel do so for more sketching tips techniques art product reviews thank you and see you in the next video bye